بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد continue on in our basic fiqh in our discussion about hayth about menstruation for the women one of the things that perhaps in the last sitting that may not have been clear when we're talking about the things that a woman is we mentioned uh, 10 things according to the madhab of Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala that a hayth that the woman menstruating is prohibited one the first thing is by is praying of course and she's also prohibited from the obligation of prayer you know she's not required to pray nor make it up also fasting she is uh, prohibited from fasting but she has to make her fasting up of course after the holy month of ramadan uh with tawaf going around the uh, circumambulating around the kaaba during hajj and umrah uh also reading the quran and holding on to the quran and and if you want the details regarding that return back to the uh the other uh lecture that we had um also sitting in the masjid this is also impermissible and this is in order to uh keep the masjid clean and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best how this falls with in this day and age when women are able to uh to wear um things that prohibit them from uh spreading their menses and 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 dirtying the pl- the places and stuff so this akramakum allah uh some of the ulama there's fatawa about this but currently i don't have anything on hand but what i recall is that some of the ulama make fatawa that if it is a uh an absolute necessity or something very very important and she can guarantee that she will not make the masjid uh filthy with with the blood akramakum allah then in that situation she can sit in the masjid you know with a um with tampons or the other uh things that women use in order to prevent blood from uh filthing uh, making places dirty akramakum allah uh then we mentioned as well uh having sexual relations meaning the to enter into the woman's vagina karamakum allah during sexual relations this is impermissible why she is during her menses and at all times it's impermissible to enter a woman or a man uh through the anus karamakum allah that is impermissible in islam and a major sin wa ayyadun billah min dhalika uh and then the sunnah of talaq and we mentioned about the sunnah of talaq that and go back to the other lecture if you want the details for that wa itdad bi ashhur and also uh this is the point i wanted to clarify and why i went back and mentioned this itdad bi ashhur meaning that when a woman has uh that she a, div- uh, a divorce women they remain in their waiting for 3 menstrual cycles or 3 um 3 months depending on what uh view you hold of the quru of the meaning of quru uh which is mentioned in the ayat and so that uh the itdad bi ashhur is that a woman if she is on her menses then she her idda if she was a, a divorced woman then her idda is is counted from 3 of her menstru- menstruation cycles meaning that those 3 periods are wait is of her waiting period for her husband to take her back and them to reunite their family or uh otherwise then after that he becomes impermissible for her and her for him and she can remarry uh etc in the other ahkam related to that then moving on after a woman has become purified she must make it's wajib that she makes ghusl that she uh washes herself takes a shower and so if her her blood her menstruation stops then there are two things which are permissible for her if she stops her menstruation cycle then she can begin fasting so if her menstruation s- stops uh before you know uh, 
before the the fajr then she can she can fast with the the other people she can fast with the rest of the muslims or or and also talaq and this is without taking a shower those two things fasting and and divorce uh, the sunnah of talaq those two things are permissible as long as she finishes her menstrual cycle her menstrual cycle without having taken a shower the other thing like making tawaf and salat and the other thing and 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 um, the other things that we mentioned uh, going in the masjid and and ta- and holding the mushaf those things require that she makes ghusl, that she purifies herself, that she makes the ceremonial washing, the bath or shower, in order to remove the impurities as well. So the two things that you don't need to uh, make the ghusl for, and, and you're, it's permissible to do immediately once the, the blood stops, is of course fasting and talaq, and the sunnah the talaq. And... Then with regards to some of the ahkam, ahkam of the menstruating woman, one of the things, of course, she can have, uh, she can, the husband and her can enjoy one another during menstruation, except for sexual intercourse. And this is in relation to the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, where the Prophet wasallam said, Isna'u kullu shay'in ghayra nikah. The Prophet wasallam said, do everything, or that everything is, is permissible, of course, except for anus. Uh, except for sexual relations when a woman is menstruating, meaning that the husband and wife can enjoy one another in the various ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made permissible, alhamdulillah, uh, with, uh, a, with the exception of entering the vagina, akramakum Allah, and of course entering the anus, akramakum Allah. And regarding the madhab, we'll just go with the madhab to give us some quiet since this is the madhab that I studied predominantly is the madhab of Imam Ahmed so I will give you some of the understanding regarding haith and this is how I uh, implement that in my household and, and, and so forth is according to the madhab of Imam Ahmed because this is what I'm more familiar with so some of the, the according to the madhab that the um, the aqal or the the aqal haith yom wa layl that means the the smallest and there's no real evidence sound for this so it could be even less than this but according to the madhab of imam ahmed they say that the least amount of time that a woman has a menses to be considered a menses is that it had to be during a day and a night but really there's no sound evidence to support that so you know wherever whenever you see the true signs of height it's height okay so that is where i differ with the madhab according to what we studied with uh various ulama and that is of course uh, according to the madhab that it is a day and a night is the 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 minimal period of of a woman's menstruation for it to be considered menstruation meaning that whatever is less than that is not considered menstruation in accordance with the madhab and as i said that the more correct view and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best is that there is no minimal period for it to be considered height uh, another principle that we need to take a look at regarding menstruation for the women is is that according to the madhab of Imam Ahmed that the longest period that a woman has menstruation for akramakum Allah is 15 days so this is 15 days so meaning that if a woman is having menstruation or what appears to be menstruation for more than 15 days you know, it goes into 16, you know, whereas the average woman, maybe it's a week, a little more, some a little less, depending on uh, many various factors. But if it goes into 15 days, if it goes into 16 days, according to the madhab, that means that it is not considered height, that she is considered mustahaba, that she is considered uh, a woman who has a uh, some sort of illness, that that blood is no longer 
uh, menstruation blood, and we will talk in depth in our future sittings about the differences in the ahkam with the haith and mustahaba. You know, when a woman is having menstruation and when a woman is just having uh, another type of blood, which is also coming from her her womb or, or what have you, but what is the difference in the rulings? And there's many differences there, and, and, and it's very important for Muslim women to understand this, and even men, to be able to help and understand what their wives are going through and, and their daughters, and to be able to give them proper Islamic judgments, bi'idhnillah ta'ala. So, and then the next mas'ala, وَأَقَلْ tuhur بين الْحَيْدَتَيْنِ ثَلَاثَ so according to the madhab as well, that the um, the least amount of time for purification between two periods, two menstrual periods, is 13 days. Meaning that if a uh, if um, so if a woman becomes pure from height and 13 days later she gets her menstrual cycle then that's considered menses according to the uh, madhab of Imam Ahmed but also in accordance with the madhab if it for example if there's only 12 days between her period they consider that not to be menses that is considered something else it would be considered that she is mustahada that she is uh, she's not menstruating but this is a blood this is a you know a type of sickness and so the ahkam is different than than a woman during her menses and we'll talk about that as we mentioned so those are some of the things and then according to the madhab wala had and that there is no limit, there's no distinguished limit between the uh, amount of time between two periods, as long as it is more than 15 days. So according to the Medhab, if it was 30 days, you know, or, you know, 40 days or two months before she got a period, then it would be considered a mensis, and there is no limit to that time period. Uh, of two between two times she was pure and I think we'll stop there as that is plenty to digest and we'll take our time in going through this before we even get into the ahadith which is dealing with the evidences and some of the ahkam related to hadith I wanted us to get get an idea of just basic rules and uh, according to uh, you know, basic rulings according to Islamic height, so that a woman, especially a, a young girl who's just entering her menses, she has an idea about uh, some of these Islamic rulings, what she can do, what she can't do, uh, what is considered height, what is considered her, her menses, and, and what is not considered menses, and, and the, the time between them, and the time between the purification, and those various rulings, so that we have some fiqh and some understanding. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.